Hi, my name is Chris Jackson. I'm a business law attorney. I've been one for over 25 years. Today, we're going to go over how to create your own LLC's operating agreement online. I'm going to take you through the process step by step. I'm going to answer the questions along the way so you can make a decision about what to include and what not to include in the operating agreement. At the end of this video, you're going to be able to download that operating agreement right onto your computer for free and you're going to have an operating agreement ready to go for your LLC. As you can see, my dog Jax is sitting behind me on my chair here, but it's not really impacting my ability to deliver this presentation, so I hope you think it's okay. First question is why do you need an operating agreement? I have covered this in other videos. I've also covered what should be in an operating agreement. Suffice it to say you need one. And you need one whether you are a single member LLC or a multi-member LLC. If the LLC gets sued, you want to make sure that your liability over here as the owner of that LLC and member of that LLC is limited to what you invested in this LLC at the outset. If you're operating your limited liability company correctly and one of the most significant elements of demonstrating that is that you have an operating agreement and you're abiding by it, uh, then that's going to make it very difficult for the plaintiff that's suing your limited liability company to then go through the limited liability company and get beyond the assets of the limited liability company to your personal assets over here, which could be your house, your car, money in your bank account, other things that are potentially exposed if you don't have an operating agreement. This is true of a single member LLC. It is true of a multi-member LLC. Bottom line is you need an operating agreement. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna direct you to the description section under my video. There's a link in there uh, that will take you to Law Depot. There will also be a link in the comments section of my video. Just note that when you follow this link, you have a 10% discount on anything that you choose beyond the free version. You're not required to choose anything beyond the free version, but if you do, number one, you're gonna get a 10% discount by using my link. Number two, it is an affiliate link of mine, so I will get a slight commission. It helps support my channel. I appreciate it. I just want you to know that. If you're not comfortable doing either, you can get to Law Depot in any way that you want. Uh, but having said that, let's jump right into it. I'm going to now take you step by step and walk you through the setting up of a limited liability company operating agreement online. At the end of the video, as I said, you will be able to download your operating agreement. You'll be ready to go. Okay, so we're going to jump right into the screen share. I'm assuming that you have selected the link in the description under my video or in the comments section that I have pinned at the top of the comments. If you did, it would have brought you to this page here where you can see at Law Depot, create your LLC operating agreement. And that is what we are going to do. And at the end, you're going to be able to print or download your agreement. Okay, so I'm choosing the state of California, but here you can see there's a drop down menu of all the different states. So for California, that is going to be my choice. I can go over other states like common ones like Wyoming and Delaware in a separate video. Uh, today I'm going to go over uh, California. A lot of the concepts will be the same. The first page after that is company purpose. What is the primary business purpose for this company? Uh, and you'll see some of this information is filled in. I wanted to save some time, but let me explain it. In general, as I recommended in my video, what to include in your operating agreement, you want to have a broad purpose. There's no reason to narrow your purpose to something too specific. It's possible the purpose for your LLC is going to evolve or change over time. If it does, you do not want to have to go back and amend your operating agreement to make sure that the purpose is broad enough to encompass whatever purpose that your LLC evolved into. It's better just to start broad. You can actually do whatever you like uh, with a broad purpose. You'll see here that, to give you an example, in California, uh, the purpose of this LLC is to engage in any lawful act or activity for which an LLC may be organized under the California Revised Uniform Limited Liability Company Act. I recommend just saying the purpose of this LLC is to engage in any lawful act or activity for which an LLC may be organized. That way it can apply to any state. It is also possible you may form your LLC in one state and then migrate it to another state. So let's keep it broad. Okay, company details. I'm presuming 
that if you're setting up this operating agreement now and you're following this video, you've already created your LLC. I've used this example in the past, Chris Jackson Mobile Dog Grooming LLC. That's going to be the name of my company. Um, pick out your principal office. So this is your office address. Save and continue. Will this company have more than one class of members? I'm going to say that for 99% of you, the answer to this question is no. However, if you have an LLC where you want the members to have different profit distribution rights or different voting rights, for example, maybe the founders of the LLC have super voting rights, they can, every one of their votes equals 10 votes, etc., uh, or there are different profit distribution rights depending upon the class of the membership interest, your operating agreement is going to get more complicated. Uh, the operation of your LLC is going to get more complicated. And I really recommend you discuss this type of provision with an attorney in your state. I'm not giving legal advice here. I want to make that clear. Uh, I am not also vouching for these documents at Law Depot. I can just tell you that Law Depot uh, has a long and good reputation. They've been around for many, many years. All right, so I'm going to select no. This Will this company have more than one class of members? No. They're all going to have the same profit distribution rights and voting rights. Membership details. Who are the members? Is it an individual or individuals, a corporation, a partnership, trust, or LLC? So a limited liability company can have uh, all different types of members. However, if you have elected or you will be electing to have your LLC tax as an S corporation, just keep in mind you can only have individual members just like an S corporation can only have individual shareholders. There are some exceptions. You can have a trust as a member of an LLC that's taxed as an S corporation. And there's certain types of single member LLCs where you can also uh, have the single member LLC as a member of an LLC taxed as an S corporation. Uh, for this exercise, I'm assuming that your members are going to be individuals. Uh, and if you are going to have entities as members, that you're not going to be electing to be taxed as an S corporation. Right now, I'm saying there's one individual member, and that's me, and I'm an individual. You can add another member down here, and if you add another member in a later stage, you're going to have to determine what member owns what percentage of the entity. Keep that in mind. In my case, it's just a single member LLC. I'm moving to the next page. Capital contributions. What are the capital contributions of each member? So a member is required to contribute capital to the LLC. This can come in the form of, say, services provided or sweat equity or the time you've spent setting up the LLC or getting the business ready to be put in an LLC. It can also include cash or it can include a combination of both. Uh, here I have decided to make it a combination. So I put $1,000 cash into the LLC bank account from my own personal account. That was part of my contribution. I'm also going to state that I put in some sweat equity. Uh, you can see here they give you an example. The total value, so the value of my thousand dollars in cash plus sweat equity, which I'm valuing at a one thousand dollars, is a total value of two thousand dollars. If another member was going to make a capital contribution and own the same percentage of the LLC as me, that member would have to put in, say, for example, if they had no sweat equity, $2,000 in cash. Save and continue. Additional contributions. Could additional contributions be required in the future? I recommend you answer yes to this question. Keep that open. There may be an occasion where you have to go out and get additional contributions um, from the members rather than raising additional cash through uh, debt offerings. Save and continue. Admitting new members. Can new members be admitted later? I would recommend you say yes, and the reason is you want to have that flexibility. Even if you're a single member LLC and you don't envision having another member, you may need a capital partner down the line, a year or two down the road. You have, you're going through an expansion phase. You don't want to take on too much debt. You'd rather have additional cash come in as equity. You go out and you find a member who maybe is going to be silent partner, etc. Go ahead and allow yourself the opportunity to bring in a new member later. Don't close that off in your operating agreement now. You don't have to bring in a new member, but have that option. What is the voting requirement to admit a new member? You can say either unanimous or majority. I'm going to choose majority. And you see here this pops up. Note that 
this will kind of give an explanation as to what your options are. Uh, so if I don't cover something here, then you, at least you have that. Why am I choosing majority? I'm choosing the majority of members to approve the adding of new members is because in general, I don't like the idea of one member. And I'm assuming, for example, in this scenario, that it's a multi-member LLC. Maybe you have one member that is not being cooperative or they don't like the idea of any change whatsoever, but the majority of the other members want to make certain decisions and this one member because you're requiring unanimous approval is essentially vetoing all your decisions but you don't want to be held hostage by one minority member that's why i'm choosing majority all right so describe all conditions there's one condition which i have copied and pasted from below and it states new members must provide a capital contribution in an amount and on such terms as the members determine and agree to be appropriate based upon the net value of the company's assets so essentially what that means is uh, they're going to determine the, the value of the assets of the company or the value of the company. And if the new member is going to come in and say own 20% of the entity, they have to contribute 20% uh, of the value. Save and continue. Can a member voluntarily withdraw from the company? I am going to say no here. You may want to give them the right to voluntarily withdraw, but um, that may mean that you have to give them their capital contribution back or give them what's left in their capital account back at that time. Um, it's like permitting you know, the equivalent of a run on the bank. Uh, I don't know that that's necessarily a good idea. We want our members to be there for the long term. If they don't want to be a member, then they have the right to sell their membership interest to another potential member, and that should be their way that they withdraw rather than you having to pay them to leave. Save and continue. Member meetings. How often will members hold regular meetings? I recommend here for the reasons I recommended LLCs over corporations, you know, I recommend uh, less formalities in a limited liability company. That's one of the main reasons I like LLCs. I don't want to have to require formalities in order for the owners of an entity to protect themselves from the liability of that entity. That is the case in a corporation. You have to have regular meetings, board meetings, shareholder meetings, etc. If you don't, you risk what's called piercing the corporate veil, where a plaintiff in a lawsuit can get to your personal assets, right? Go through the corporation, not be limited to the assets of the corporation, but come after your personal assets. They can do the same thing in a limited liability company if, for example, you're supposed to be having regular meetings and you're not. In other words, you're not treating the entity as separate from yourself. I don't like that. Um, I like the lack of formalities in LLC, and if you don't engage in those formalities, you should still be protected. So I'm gonna choose only as required. Now, certain laws in certain states may require the members hold meetings, and that's fine, we say only as required, but if you choose weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, and they are not required, and you don't have them, again, that subjects you to potentially personal liability, which I don't want for you. Okay, how will the member votes be determined? I'm choosing by ownership share uh, for myself. Again, I'm not giving you legal advice, but I do want to tell you why I'm choosing this. It's simply because I want to make sure that a minority owner of the entity doesn't have too much power when it comes to votes. So let's just say I put in $10,000, and that $10,000 entitled me to 50% of the limited liability company. Then I got this other member who put in $5,000 and he's got 25% of the LLC. So he has 25%, I have 50%. I don't want his vote to be equal to mine. It's not right. I put in more money, I put more at risk. I should have more voting power than him or her. I'm gonna choose by ownership share rather than the equal vote of each member. Save and continue. Management details, who will manage the company the members or one or more appointed managers. I have covered this in a video as whether to choose a manager managed LLC or a member managed LLC. I'm not going to rehash it, but suffice it to say, I choose manager managed LLCs for many reasons. And I encourage you to watch that video so you make the right decision here. There are occasions where a member managed LLC makes a lot of sense. For example, if everyone wants equal right to participate in the management of the company, every one of the members, uh, and that may be the case under certain circumstances, but if it's not, I would choose a one or more appointed managers option. 
how will a new manager be appointed majority vote of members again i do not like unanimous vote of members unless absolutely required by law because i do not want one member vetoing decisions period who is the manager okay so you can have one or more managers here's an option to add managers uh, in my case um, i'm going to make just myself a manager if you do add another manager we want to make sure that you address how decisions are made must the decisions be made by both managers uh, or you can have three managers and have a tie-breaking vote that is up to you I'm going with one manager save and continue what are the duties and responsibilities of your managers I just left it very general here Manage the day-to-day -day operations of the company. We're going to cover later who has to vote on what. Save and continue. Okay, accounting. How should this company be classified for tax purposes? As I stated earlier, for most LLCs, I like to have them taxed as an S corporation. That is what I'm going to choose here. Okay, so you also have the option of choosing disregarded entity. That is an option for single member LLCs only. That would mean that I'd have to pay what's called a 15.3% federal uh, self-employment tax. The reason I'm choosing to be taxed as an S corporation is because I don't want to pay that tax. So I'm choosing corporation. If you had more than one member, you could also choose to be taxed as a partnership. I don't want to give tax advice. Seek that advice from your accountant. But I am choosing corporation. Do you wish to include your fiscal year end? So I just want to make it clear here that my fiscal year end is also the calendar year end. So I'm going to say yes, and it's December 31st. If for some reason, uh, and this is an accounting issue also, you want a different fiscal year end than the calendar year end, then make sure you specify that here. So I'm just choosing December 31st, as I stated. Annual report. So this is an obligation that you have, in my case as the manager, uh, because I'm managing the company, to provide reports to the members. Now, they give you the option of an income statement, a balance sheet, a cash flow statement, a profit and loss summary. Keep in mind that you can provide whatever you want. You can provide all of these. I don't like putting the obligation in the operating agreement to provide every single one of these. I don't know if you're going to have a cash flow statement in addition to an income statement, a balance sheet. Uh, these two here are pretty standard. You should have them anyway, so I don't have a problem including those. I'm going to leave out cash flow statement, profit and loss summary. That's basically a summary of the income statement. I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to choose those two, save and continue. Will the company be dissolved if one member leaves? My answer is no. So let's say, for example, you have two members and one of the member leaves, whether you've chosen to allow them to voluntarily withdraw or you've let them withdraw. I don't want that to automatically dissolve the LLC if I'm going to continue on the business, even though that member is gone. So I'm going to choose no. That's my personal preference. Are members allowed to sell their share to non-members? Yes, they should have the opportunity to sell their shares. You will see that you as a member will have the right of first refusal to buy those shares. When I say shares, I mean the share of their membership interest in the LLC. So I'm going to give them and you uh, as a member uh, the option to sell your membership interest. Binding the company in contract. Who can sign contracts on behalf of the company? Any manager, any manager or member, specified groups or individuals. In my case, I'm stating any manager. That is one of the benefits of a manager-managed LLC. You can sign contracts and you can sign documents as the manager of the LLC. It is a title. It makes it easier rather than in a member-managed LLC. You have to have all the members sign every document. Some may be unwilling to do so. Um, so I'm choosing any manager. Okay, duty of loyalty. Are members or managers allowed to compete with the company? I'm going to say no. I do not want my members or the managers to compete with the company. And then the next question is, how long are members or managers restricted from competing with the limited liability company? And it really depends upon what is allowed in your state. I cannot give you legal advice here. I know some states are different than others. Um, I certainly want to discourage a member from, say, selling their interest, their membership interest in the LLC, and then setting up shop um, in the same geographic area to compete with me. 
uh, especially since they have access to confidential information about the limited liability company. So I'm not sure what the courts are going to allow. Uh, Law Depot says I can choose up to a five-year non-competition period. I feel a little more comfortable with two years, so that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, we're at actions that require unanimous consent. This is the unanimous consent of the members. What actions by the LLC and or the manager are going to require unanimous approval of the members? As I've stated before, I don't really like the idea of unanimous approval. I don't want a minority member that owns, say, 5% of the LLC to be in a position to block uh, what the company wants to achieve that maybe the majority of the members or even a super majority, which is normally two thirds of the members, want to achieve simply because it requires unanimous uh, consent of the members. There are certain items uh, like dissolution of the company uh, that require unanimous consent by law in certain states. That's just an example. Um, so let's let the law dictate what requires unanimous consent. Let's not make the operating agreement more restrictive. So I'm not going to choose any of these. Okay, managerial actions that require majority consent. So these are the actions of the manager that will require approval of the majority of the members. I pre-filled these. There's three of them uh, that I would recommend, generally speaking. There may be more. This is really up to you. The first one is incurring a single transaction expense in excess of 25000 You can see that was an example under the first one. They use 5000 I'm saying 25000 So if I, the manager, want to enter into a transaction that's going to cost the company more than 25000 I have to go get majority member approval for that transaction. You can change this number to whatever you're comfortable with. I recommend limiting the manager's discretion there with some cap. Number two, a sale of substantially all the company's assets. This may be covered by the law in your state, but essentially what this means is if the manager wants to basically sell most of the assets of the company and wind down the business, uh, then the manager needs to get approval of a majority of the members. And the last one is a merger or acquisition transaction of the company. So. In order for a, the manager to enter into a merger agreement or an agreement to acquire another company, uh, which would actually be covered by number one, or to be acquired by another company, uh, the manager must first go get member approval. These are pretty standard. I recommend you have some limitations on what your manager can do. Additional clauses, do you want to include any additional terms or information? It says they're not needed unless you have anything in particular that you want to address in the operating agreement. Uh, you can do that, but I'm selecting no. Specify the date, I'm putting today's date. Will you have witnesses sign this agreement? Uh, the answer is no. Witnesses generally are not necessary, but if you'd like to have witnesses just to make sure that no one's gonna question whether you, in fact, were the person who signed it, that's up to you. You can add some witnesses. You can select yes. And there's going to be um, some lines for witness signatures in your operating agreement. I'm saying no. Okay, so this is your operating agreement. And you can preview it here. You can go through the different provisions. If you determine that you want to make a change, you can always just go back. Everything's saved automatically, but you can go back and make changes. And then you go to the next page, which is select a license, and you have three options. Number one, the trial subscription is free for one week, it says right here. So if you select this, you do have to enter your credit card information, but you will get the operating agreement for free as long as you cancel your trial subscription within the one week period. The other option is you can pay $57 as a one-time charge. Keep in mind if you choose this option or this option over here, by using my link, you get a 10% discount on these, which will show up when you check out. Uh, if you choose the $57 option, you have five years within which you can go back in and make changes to the operating agreement. It will be here for you to make changes. Uh, it is something you might need to do if you expect to say add members or make other changes uh, to your operating agreement as your business grows. Uh, or you could choose this uh, one-year pro subscription, uh, which is essentially the equivalent of $8.99 a month if you prepay it for one year. 
Uh, what this entitles you to is not only the ability to go in and make edits to your operating agreement during the subscription period, uh, but you can also go in and uh, find other contracts and print those out and make changes to those as well. Now, they have hundreds of uh, documents to choose from that you will have access to uh, if you choose this option here. I'm going to select free. So on this page you put in your credit card information and press submit and you will be done. You will have your operating agreement downloadable well, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of creating your own operating agreement. If you liked the video, I encourage you to give me the thumbs up uh, and just let me know that you liked it. If you have any questions about what I did, if I didn't cover anything, or you have a question about something I covered, please put a comment below in the comments section of the video. I will try to get to each and every comment as quickly as possible. And by the way, I'm going to generate other videos like this. I'm going to walk you through other types of contracts, for example, employment agreements or non-disclosure agreements. So if you are interested in that kind of content, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. It is something I'm going to be doing on a regular basis. Thank you very much. I wish you and your LLC all the best. Mm -hmm.